Now, on Wednesday, Peter Robinson and Martin McGuinness uh, were summoned to Downing Street along with the devolved government leaders of Scotland and Wales to be told by Gordon Brown that he wants some of his money back, a billion pounds to be precise, with 200 million of that coming from here. So, so much for the peace dividend. It's the last thing our cash-strapped executive needs. They've said they made the economy their number one priority, but do their actions to date support that assertion? With me is Economy Minister Arlene Foster. Arlene Foster, I've called you Economy Minister. It's common shorthand but in fact you're not and some people think your very department is a problem because it doesn't have the powers that it should have. Well I'm Enterprise Trade and Investment Minister and within that obviously is tourism which is one of the key drivers for Northern Ireland and actually it's an area which we're seeing a lot of growth in uh, and I'm confident that we will meet our targets in relation to the tourism part of my brief. But looking back at the programme for government it's important to look back at what we set as the programme for government back then uh, in 2007 and that was to grow a dynamic and innovative economy and certainly we're very much still on stream in relation to that. We've seen some very innovative work done in our economy. We're seeing more uh, uh, looking at research and development, which is key to developing Northern Ireland as a good, open, stable economy. And I think there's much to be proud of in Northern Ireland. And actually, just this week, uh, whilst we have bad news in relation to Wrightbus, we did have actually 1,500 jobs announced. So I think that is important okay. to recognise well, as well. Okay, was an example you were giving a short mm. time ago as one that was beating uh, the recession. It's clear that nobody's immune. Now, Gordon Gordon Brown has asked uh, for Northern Ireland to cough up in terms of giving back some money. He's looking at the other regions too. Alex Salmon says the 500 million that he's asking for from Scotland will equate to 8,700 job losses. So what does the 200 million in Northern Ireland equate to in terms of jobs to be lost? Well, uh, we haven't accepted that the, the 200 million is going back to the Exchequer because promises were made at the time of the St Andrews Agreement. And I recognise that at the time of the St Andrews Agreement, we were in a totally different economic place. All bets but, are off, Gordon uh, Brown well, would say. We, uh, we were made promises at that time and indeed we secured the £900 million before devolution to take forward devolution. And if we're talking about areas such as policing and justice where we need a huge injection of money into Northern Ireland, then all bets may be off in relation to that, but all bets are off also in relation to policing and justice. We need to see the money there as well if we're going to go forward in relation to but that But if he's issue. asking for £200 million, I mean, that could, by the same uh, equation, equate to something like 3,500 jobs having to go simply to meet that money going back uh, to the Treasury. Well, you're assuming uh, in relation to uh, private sector and public sector that that's where the money's going to come out of in relation to the private sector, and I think that's what Alex Salmon's talking about. But what we're looking at uh, uh, certainly is the efficiencies that we have been asked to make to date. And I, as far as I am aware, uh, most of the departments are online to make those efficiencies. We've worked very hard at those efficiencies. And we do, as always, work very hard on those efficiencies. But can I say, if we look at the, uh, the Tories and what they're talking about uh, as well in relation to the economy, they at one point were saying that we needed to revisit the Barnet formula for Northern Ireland. Now, let me say this. If the Barnet formula was taken away from Northern Ireland, that would have huge consequences and the £200 million frankly that Gordon Brown's looking for at the minute would fade into comparison with the, uh, the problems we would have in relation to the Barnett okay, formula. Looking at the big things that the executive has done uh, you know, what would you say are examples of where it has made decisive action on the economy? Well we made decisive action in relation right back at the beginning, the industrial uh, cap on rates, uh, that was hugely important and even still manufacturers are saying to me that because of that cap at 30% uh, on rates it has made a huge difference to them uh, and I think that that should be recognised. That was right back at the beginning of our time in devolution. Since then, we're looking at small business rates relief and the finance minister will be making some announcements about that in the near future. We've also frozen the regional rate, as you know, allowing uh, £1,000 to be saved by householders uh, over three, uh, three years. So there have been quite significant but savings for householders and indeed for businesses as but well. But these are decisions you made in the good times and when everything has changed, are they the right decisions? For instance, freezing the rates is costing 50 odd million a year. You've deferred water charges, which might help people uh, who would rather not pay their water charges, but it's also a cost of maybe three to four hundred million a year that the executive now doesn't have to spend. Capital expenditure programmes are having to be slashed because you promised 1.8 billion in the good times, and in the bad times, you can only spend 1.4 billion when others are suggesting you should be spending even more. Well, you see, you're looking at supporting businesses and supporting households as two different things. I actually don't see it like that because if we support households, then they will have more money available to them to 
to spend and then therefore consumer confidence will rise when they have that money to spend in our economy because one of the key things about this downturn is the lack of confidence in the economy and the lack of confidence right throughout the world and what we are saying to people is we will support households we will support businesses and in doing both of those things we will release more money into the economy and yet though when some of the economists look at this they say that one of the, the levers you should look at is something like construction getting money into construction and yet as I say capital expenditure is actually going to decrease under this executive because much of it was predicated upon selling assets which you now won't be able to sell. Uh, social housing is under threat. Margaret Ritchie faces a hundred million pounds a year shortfall in her budget because she doesn't have the money. Why not uh, prioritise those things that the economists say will actually get the economy going and will you make true your promise to prioritise the economy. Well, it is important that we look at the fact that we are in a global downturn and how do we deal with that? We have to be innovative and look at different ways to deal with issues that come before us. Take social housing, for example. I had a very interesting conversation recently about regenerating old buildings to use as social houses. So in actual fact, you don't have to build all of the time to make new social housing. There's actually, and indeed the uh, housing executive in the past have uh, followed that through with their living over the shops, lots it was called. There's more of that that could be done to create more social housing space within our towns and cities and I think we need to be innovative at this time and it's not just private sector that needs to innovate and go into research and development but government as well needs but, to do that. But on those big headline figures isn't it clear that you're going to miss your targets for social housing so you're not actually pumping money into the economy there and in fact capital expenditure programs are going to decrease under this executive unless you find some other means to raise money. I don't accept that we're not going to meet our targets yes they're going to be hugely challenging to us but as I say we have to look at them which is one of the reasons why I instigated the review of Invest Northern Ireland and indeed my own department's policies to see what we needed to be doing. Was there something we needed to be doing differently to reach the targets that, have we, that we have set ourselves? I believe we will reach those targets, but if we need to look at and to innovate in a more uh, effective way, then we should do that too. And also radical steps. For instance, uh, David Varney did a report on competitiveness mm. in Northern Ireland. If you make savings in the public sector, he suggests the government should let you keep those. So why do we not see proposals, for instance, such as we've had in the Republic, such as cutting uh, pensions, perhaps even cutting public service pay. Well, certainly we would be open to look at any of those and indeed I understand the Assembly Commission are looking at salaries at the minute and as you know the Executive have still put forward their response to the Varney 2 recommendations, uh, the departments have put forward their proposals in relation to that and in fact the review of Invest Northern Ireland was one of those things that David Varney felt that needed to happen to make us more competitive. Look, my vision for Northern Ireland is to be an open regional economy which has indigenous growth and also has foreign direct investment and it's that balance of of indigenous growth and foreign direct investment that I can see bringing Northern Ireland into one of the leading regions in the United Kingdom. Let me ask you about one other project. It's Project Kelvin. It's mm -hmm. become a matter of controversy uh, and it's about getting broadband uh, improved across Northern Ireland. Now Sinn Féin had a row with you over where a particular piece of uh, technology called a telehouse was to be located. It's now going back uh, to Derry Stroke Londonderry after their campaign. You've backed down on that one. Why? I haven't backed down on it. Uh, the Hibernia group who are putting the telehouse and in fact in charge of the whole telecommunications link uh, decided that they would put the telehouse originally at Colerain. And then there was a very negative campaign uh, in Londonderry City, a campaign that was actually causing problems for the entire project. And the Hibernia company came to me and okay. said, look, can I place this in telehouse in Londonderry? I said, yes, if it's causing you negativity, it doesn't okay. really matter where the telehouse is as long as we get Project Kelvin on the road. Okay, thank you.